if you're in the chat room, hi. I can't see what you're writing, so sorry. Uh, if you want to, actually, if somebody wants to send me a question, what you can do is uh, tweet it and just mention me uh, at Chris underscore Radcliffe, and it'll show up here eventually. The connection is really bad for Colloquy, though. I know I'm just randomly talking. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> so yeah, space up. Foundation. So you, yeah, foundation. So you've done a space up. I have. I've done a space up. And you're doing a space up. I am. In San Francisco. Space up, space up. And you would like to do. Well, I'm just interested in how you pull things together because we're mm -hmm. looking for interesting activities for our students and things like that. So okay. Just going to see what see the process. <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely. Take it in. <laughs> me, sick of me. My name's Anima Anima Space. Um, I don't know too much about space or space up, but I've done like, You're perfect. conferences for student groups. And stuff, so. Okay. Cool. And where are you now? Um, okay, so you're in your local gift. Yeah. Sweet. So, um, space ups are actually pretty straightforward to put together. They're actually not nearly as, as difficult to set up as like a conference conference, as Frank Michael knows. Yes. And uh, the, the key to a space up um, is really to just have a place where everybody can come together. And that's pretty much it. Um, there are a couple of tricky parts to that, which is generally you want to find a venue that's as close to free as possible so that everything could be really low cost. Um, and then uh, the other part is that you want to find a venue that um, is very open to the kind of things that you're going to be doing. So uh, one of the things that you do for a space up is you bring the food in as soon as you have to have people going elsewhere for food, it, it kind of breaks things up. Uh, and if you want that food to also be, you know, as inexpensive as possible, then it needs to be, so like a hotel, they'll give you free space as long as they use their catering, but then you use their catering. You can't bring in like pizza or rubios or that kind of thing. So once you've got that basic stuff down, I mean, you've, you've participated in it. Uh, today, the rest of the format is really straightforward. I mean, they, they actually, at LA, they did more kind of special event stuff than, um, than we did in San Diego. Uh, Houston also did a bunch of special event stuff. But that's really optional. It's secondary. It's not necessarily um, what you need. Um, so as long as you've got the, the venue, uh, you know the format, which is just you put up a big grid and people fill it in, and then you're good to go. Now, the nice thing about uh, space of format is that it's based on something called Bar Camp. I don't know if you, have you heard of Bar Camp. Bar Camp. Anybody? Not until today. So, yeah. Like yesterday, I guess. Yeah. So Bar Camp is like space up in, and that gets reversed. Bar Camps have been going on for years now. Uh, they started in 2005, and that's the same. Same format, just for technology instead of space. So kind of all technology. Uh, if you get a chance to go to a bar camp, um, I highly recommend it because you know it's it's like this, but a lot more. And so there's just lots of uh, kind of tech geekery going on the entire weekend. Uh, but if you're thinking of doing a space up or anything like this, it's really good to get in touch with the bar camp um, organizers that are near you. Because uh, there have been bar camps all around the world. There's one almost every weekend of the year. And they really know, you know, they've looked at the local venues already. They know kind of a, you know, a space up or unconference friend friendly venue. They've probably talked to local sponsors already. Um, the sponsors, <coughs> so if you're doing it right, the sponsors are really just there to cover uh, food and incidental things like if you want to have a party and that kind of thing because hopefully your, your venue is free. Um, if the venue costs a little bit, then having the, um, the sponsors cover the, the venue or having the venue be a sponsor is also good. But again, that's if you've got people who know kind of the bar camp you know, level stuff in your community, 
then um, they can definitely help with what's going on with us face up. Uh, colleges, like you'd imagine, are, are also a great, if you can ally with a college that actually takes care of a lot of things because usually the, the college will sponsor if uh, uh, students can come in and um, also um, the, the college will probably provide you the space. And, um, the other big thing is uh, having a, a, a bunch of volunteers who can, you know, like all the, the folks have been running around over the, the past few days to make sure that the webcams are up and that kind of thing. Even if the colleges do provide the space and if they do charge, the students might be able to get it for cheaper. Right. We allow right. students. Yeah, so like we did that for San Diego. Right. But it, it saved us a bunch of money, although we had to use their catering, which shocked up the butt more. <laughs> yeah. More <expensive. laughs> yeah, there's always something hidden there. But uh, but yeah, usually what you do is you have either a reduced or a free rate for students, which is just generally a good idea because, again, the whole point is to just bring people together and let them be together in this format for two days or whatever. And if you bring students in and then you also bring companies and scientists and kind of, you know, other, you know, teachers and that kind of thing, um, it really does get a good mix. And uh, the, the students benefit, everybody else benefits because, you know, the conversations get pulled and not just pushed by the people who are, who are giving them. How is the overall organization structure? Is it, do you do anything other than the meetings or no? So um, that would be up to you. So let me tell you a little bit more about how kind of space up in a, in a general sense is, is organized. So each city has its own organizers. Um, and then all of those are uh, linked up by what I'm about to talk about, which is the Space Up Foundation, which historically has just been SD Space and pretty much me. Um, but then the organizers are who determine everything that's going to be going on. So for instance, if you wanted to do a, a Space Up event every weekend, but it was going to be like four hours on Sunday afternoon. You could absolutely do that. If you wanted to do um, a space up, you know, format thing that was a week long and you did it once a year or once every, you know, two years, that would also uh, be a good way to do it. Uh, DC has been doing um, something that they call the Space Bar Bash, I think, and uh, they actually just find a bar or a restaurant and on you know Friday evenings or Saturday evenings they get together and they have kind of a mini mini space up with maybe 10 or 15 people um, for like an on-campus club I could see them doing something a lot more often you know monthly or quarterly or that kind of thing uh, Houston has been doing uh, they have kind of the main space ups and then smaller like one day kind of topic focused um, sessions. Uh, one was uh, to go over space points and kind of work it out. Uh, another one was to, um, oh they're about to do one which is going to be commercial space flight. So they're doing like little targeted things between the, the larger space ups. And again there's no there's no like top down structure where it's like you have to you know register it or it's being really specifically coordinated. Uh, it's more just, you know, a format that you can take and you can run with it to, to move forward. So do you find organizers? Do they find you? Or is there some other way that organizers come up? So, so far it's been, um, organizers have been either connected to the space community already or they meet um, at Space Up. And usually they, they come to Space Up. Uh, so like Aaron Michaels here, to get to know space up, uh, and then go forth to, uh, to do SF. Um, and a lot of it is just you know me running across people and saying you should do a space up. <laughs> uh, but then of course we have on the on the website and and if you you know go through Space Vidcast and watch stuff, um, we have sessions like this and also on the website it's like if you want to do one of these for yourself just get in touch. So there have been people, you know, in India and, you know, 
Vancouver and you know places where Space Up hasn't been at all uh, who find out about it externally and come to us. Um, how many people, I guess, at this conference would be like out of state? Is it mostly in state in that area that go? Or um, so you mean specifically this weekend, or just in general in for general space ops? Yeah, it, okay. it it varies actually. For for LA, I, I don't even know. Do you, do you have a sense of who's like, local? How many, who's not? Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, so in the room, who's who's local to Southern California? I guess San Diego. <laughs> so, um, Northern California, um, I think there are some folks in from maybe Arizona, but this one tends to be pretty, pretty low. Uh, San Diego the first, uh, there were people from all over the place, but that was because it was introducing the space of concept and I was kind of telling people it's like, come to this so that you know what to take away. Most of them are going to be I think of them as regional. Um, there are going to be some people who, because they're really interested in the topic or interested in meeting specific people who are going, they'll fly. But I'd say 80 or 90 percent of the people who are going to be there are going to either be from the local area or regional. And that's that's kind of the idea: is that you do them really frequently, you do them all over the place, and so you can you can pull people in where you're going to be. But yeah, it, and it's an opportunity to reach out to people who aren't necessarily in the thick of it, like a lot of us are. But, you know, so where you invite students, you can work with local schools. It really is to, is to really bring regional people together. Yeah, I also, um, for San Diego, I made a, a specific kind of reaching out to the tech community, too. Because you have a lot of people who, they're interested in space, they go to college, they realize where the careers are, they get the computer science degree, they go into you know, computers. And then in the back of their mind, they have this kind of space is cool, but it's not really going to involve. So then you just kind of draw them back in, and suddenly they're interested in doing space projects. So there is pretty much anywhere um, a big enough community to, to support a space up at least once a year. So you want to talk about the foundation? Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the foundation. Yeah. So as we've been doing more of these, so the, the very first one that we did was in February 2010. So not that long ago. And um, it was, like I said, it was based on the bar camp idea. And it really is just kind of a format that people take on and they just kind of copy and duplicate. But one of the things that we found with specifically in the space community that was different from the tech community is that each space up had some challenges that all kind of matched the other. And the first one was that it's a lot easier for a space up to get uh, sponsor funding if they're a nonprofit organization. So most sponsors, you know, uh, like for instance, venues. Uh, a venue like this, if you're a nonprofit organization, they can give you the space, or they can get you a, a deep discount on on the venue. Uh, if you're a for-profit organization, or if you're just individuals, then they either can't get that to you at all, or you have to um, pay full price for it. So, getting being a nonprofit organization is kind of that first hurdle, and uh, we did it by partnering with SC Space for the first one. Um, Houston did it by partnering with the, the Clear Lake um, NSS chapter, which SC Space is also an NSS chapter. And so they got the nonprofit organizational steps from that. LA, I don't even remember what they did. I think they, AAA. the AIAA chapter. And so they worked it through that. DC, they weren't actually able to figure out how to get nonprofit status. And so they just decided not to take any funding at all. So if there were organizations who could just kind of show up with food or, you know, here we'll let you use the space, but it's kind of under the radar or whatever, um, they were able to do that. But it, it meant some headaches for them. And with some of the others, it, it also meant headaches to, to try to 
negotiate that non status. So that's kind of hurdle one that I think that the Space of Foundation might be able to help people with. Because uh, the National Space Society has this uh, chapters organization. So the society is a nonprofit organization. And then each chapter, all they do is they kind of fill up some paperwork and you know, name the people who are going to be running the chapter. And then they're good. They're, they're handed an EIN number, which is what identifies you as a nonprofit. And they can go get a bank account with that and they can go forward. Um, with a, a space up, we might even want to go a little farther than that, just set up a bank account, set up the EIN number, and have kind of a fast track process for it. Because most of these, I, I guess I didn't really talk about this, most of these are set up over the course of six months. So space up LA went from zero, no, no planning, no organizers, no anything, to us sitting here right now from February to now. They started it in at Space Up San Diego because um, Randall Clakes uh, from XCore stood up and said, "Okay, I want to do more of this." And I said, "Well, San Diego is probably going to be a while." So then he said, "Well, how about LA?" And Eric stood up and said, "Okay, I'll do LA." And that was February, and now we have event. So you're not going to get nonprofit, you know, um, paperwork even started in that time. But if they can go to the Space Up Foundation, file some really quick paperwork, because the once you have kind of a sub-organization, it's actually really straightforward. The, the, the tax filing is like this one sheet of paper where you like check a box that says that it was like less than 25,000 or whatever. No, it's 50. 50? Yeah. Yeah, it's a we, we spent less than $50,000 check, and then you, you send that in. That's your tax paperwork. And it just makes a lot of things really easy because the parent organization is, they're the ones that do all the work. We have some questions. Oh, they have questions, great. Um, it's two from Astro YYZ. Uh, assuming all participants need to get to the Space Up event first thing to set up the schedule for the day. So I guess she thinks the first that's the first thing. Yeah, the, the schedule actually doesn't have to be set up right away. So, I mean, you kind of see that there's the whole big grid. And part of the idea is that um, people show up early, or at least some people show up early, and they kind of take the, the first set of sections, or sessions. And then as the day goes on and you start talking about things, so like, you know, what's a topic that kept coming up in all the panels that you've seen so far? How to get to space. Like, like how personally to get yeah. into space. You're like, everybody's asking, how, how personally do I get into space? And so it could be the middle of the day, and you just you run out to the grid, you write down, how do I personally get into space, so that that's what you're talking about, and you slap that up on the grid. So the grid doesn't have to be completely filled out at the beginning. And she also asks, uh, how does it work getting space vidcast to broadcast the space up event? Oh, that's a really good question. I didn't talk about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jesse did this. I think you saw that. But um, Space Vidcast, that's actually uh, um, something I wanted to talk about as well. So Space Vidcast has like worked really hard to get to every single one of these so far. Now obviously there's going to be some kind of limit to that. Because I mean we've had five and they've been to five and that's, that's been pretty cool. And this is not their business, this is just their hobby. Yeah, this is, this is what they do as a sideline. This is um, Space Vidcast. They have, you know, some funding, but there's not generally a whole lot of funding that comes from Space Up to this. So, right now, how you get Space uh, Space Vidcast to cover a Space Up is you contact them and you say, "Hey, would you be interested in covering this?" And hopefully, you can find a sponsor and you know let that sponsor kind of, you know, shovel. I don't remember what it is, but it's in the in the realm of thousands of dollars. Um, into kind of the space vidcast, bring all this stuff out and, and uh, do the do the coverage fun. Um, I do think that a space up could happen without space vidcast. I think it wouldn't be quite as cool. One of the things that I'd like to do, and this is a good segue into the the, the second part of this. So actually, let me talk a little bit about the kind of logistics of having space vidcast. So over there, there's a computer, 
And uh, um, it's pretty innocuous, but uh, that it looks like probably about $3,000 worth of hardware. Um, that does not mean that you go out and you buy $3,000 worth of hardware, but it means that somebody loaned the use of that computer for uh, this weekend, uh, which was very kind of them. The camera was almost certainly brought by Carrie Ann. I think uh, Space Fitcast has those. There's a mixing board next to that computer, um, which may have either been sourced locally or it came with Carrie Ann. Uh, when Ben and Carrie Ann travel, they travel like super heavy because they bring all sorts of hardware and, and cables and stuff with them. That is then connected out through the Wi Fi um, of the, the building. Now, I don't think uh, that the, the Space Center has Wi Fi, so I'm pretty sure that somebody locally set up um, wireless uh, access points and paid for um, a weekend of Wi-Fi. So there's actually a ton of infrastructure that can go into uh, supporting space vidcasts that sometimes if you, if you can make it happen uh, volunteer-wise, then it actually doesn't have to be super high cost. It's just a matter of getting Ben or Carrie Ann or somebody space vidcast related to come out and then allocating some volunteers because one of the nice things that happens with these is that they're, they're cut up by session by session. And um, so for instance, at the start of the session, somebody came in and hit the start and maybe typed in what the name of the session was or I think that comes at the end or whatever. So that when you're going back through the coverage, you can actually go in and look up how to, you know, how to do your own space up and it'll come up and you can just view the thing. So. I think Space Vidcast actually just tweeted something about it. So I'll read these in a minute. So anyway, the funding-wise, one of the things that we wanted to do, um, I'll see you in five minutes, okay. One of the things that we wanted to do was set up um, the, uh, the Space Vidcast kind of fund, not necessarily just for Space Vidcast, but just kind of the general kind of communicating out fund, which, um, would be part of funds that the Space Up Foundation collects for use at all Space Ups, and then just kind of divvies it out um, as the, the Space Ups are put together. So let me back up on that one a little bit. We have a couple minutes. And so the idea is that like these guys went to SpaceX, and they went to ISU, and they went to a couple of other groups, and they said, hey, you know, can you give us X amount of money for um, space up? Now they did this in the last six months, which is faster than most companies work. But usually you can kind of sneak it in because it's not that much money. If you had more time and you actually could allocate more money, then um, I think that you could basically spread that around over more space ups so that what you do is you'd say, I want to be the Arizona chapter of the Space Up Foundation, and you get your your EIN, your bank account. Your bank account would have a certain amount of money in it to start as kind of startup funds, um, and you would just create it to, to do a space up. Then, um, oh, and you'd be handed a list. It's like here are your you know your initial sponsors for this. So you kind of get like shot out of the gate. Then you say, okay, well we're going to have space vidcast for this. And uh, look, Space Vidcast. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. Even on camera, you need to. Oh, there you are. So um, then, if you said, "Oh yeah, we're going to have Space Vidcast for this," um, then more money would be injected into your into your bank account. So it's one thirty. I got to end this. Um, let me just double check and see if there are other. <laughs> there are lots of this. Uh, I think that was all the questions that I saw. Yep. So we will talk about this more. And uh, thank you. Woo! 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 Yeah, spaceup.org. Woo! <laughs> all right. Anybody who's going to the um, 